Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be interviewing Jose, who just finished his first year in Catolica University, which is a private medical school in English here in Rome. Hi Jose, thank you for joining us. Would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Hi Sarah, thank you for having me. Sure. Uh, as Sarah correctly said, my name is Jose Fernandez. I'm an up-and-coming second-year student at Catolica University School of Medicine. Um, and um, today I will, I'm joining Sarah to share some tips with you basically on uh, just how to prepare for the entrance exam, some more details about the courses since I've already completed a first year at the university and offer you some other um, tips and tricks that may be able to help you through the course. And uh, Perfect. I'm just really happy to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Awesome. So the entrance into Cattolica is different than the other medical schools in Italy because the public universities have to do an exam called the IMAT. So what is the entrance procedure for Cattolica? Like, how is it different? Is there an entrance exam? Could you like just detail how to actually get in? Yes, uh, I would like to speak from my experience on this part. I know uh, well, what I noticed between the syllabi for the exams for the IMAT and the Catholic exam is that they cover basically the same topics. But in the case of the Catholic exam, uh, you have 65 multiple choice questions split between uh, the four basic sciences, right? So you get biology, chemistry, physics, and math, which is the usual thing on the IMAT. And just like in the IMAT, physics and math covers only one section, and it's based on eight questions. Like I said before, uh, you get 65 questions. The other two relevant sections are uh, critical thinking and problem solving, if I remember correctly. And then there's also, uh, being that Catholica obviously is a Catholic school, you get a uh, five uh, question long segment on uh, religious based questions. So for these, um, for this segment on the exam, they're going to give you three, um, three passages, well, actually three very long uh, books that you will have to skim and go through. And that is the material that will be covered on this part of the exam. So again, you get 65 questions uh, with topics similarly co covered on those of the IMAT, and except for the religious part. And then you get one minute per question. So that's 65 minutes per question. And essentially, um, from what I gather from, from my experience, the rest of the process to being admitted is similar as in the public universities in that you get in according to your score relative to the other students who competed uh, with you. Cool. And uh, when is when is this exam held? Like, is it held at a different time? Because the IMAT is usually halfway through September. When is the application process for Catolica? Yes, usually, um, I think this year it was in March, but then last year because of COVID, we held two dates for some of the students that couldn't make it to the uh, to the first session. I think the first exam was also on February and then admissions begin on September. But then there was another session on July the 22nd last year. And then, uh, you know, admissions are considered for September as well. So um, another point I'd like to add is that um, there used to be 50 spots, I think. So um, was it 20? Okay, 24 residents of the European Union and then 34 uh, non-EU residents. But then uh, I think the Ministry of Education raised the number of spots in the school. So now that we have 30 spots for uh, EU students and 50 for non-EU students. Is but the process uh, different? Is it the same exam for both EU and non-EU? Or do non-EU applicants have to do anything additional? No, 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 no. It is the same exam. What, okay. Yeah, with the rest of the contents, everything, everything stays the same way. Cool. So why, why would a student consider going to Catolica over, say, a public university? Like, what do you think uh, it offers? Like, I know it's a private university, so the funding and the facilities are obviously going to be a lot better compared to a public university. But what do you think makes Catolica like a good option for someone considering private education? I, yeah. I would say that I know that a lot of universities in Italy, like Sapienza and Bologna and Torbergara, have have a really high reputation and they're they're very good by themselves. Their medical programs are excellent. But I think one of the reasons why a student may choose Catholica over over other schools like these is uh, their international reputation. Um, if you take a moment to browse through their web page, um, Catholica has a has a very good connection and links to other schools such as um, I think I think Stanford University has links to Catholica, so that gives you more of an opportunity. If you're a person that likes to travel and expand, let's say your current mindset by traveling to other countries, and um, 
and you know cursing through the program that you love by doing that i think catholica is a good option for you i know they have um international internships and volunteer opportunities and well personally for me I'm, i come from another school where uh, uh i did my fair share of volunteering i was with a group with a volunteer group and i like those opportunities right um i'm sure i'm sure other schools have them uh, i'm sure sapienza does too but uh maybe they're not as exposed as in catholica or maybe they're not uh they're not the high selling point of the school. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm talking from like a personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just we're just finding out more about Catholica. It's not like a comparison to another school. So right. what uh, what do your timetables look like? Like, how is your day divided? Are they long days? Are they short days? Uh, does it like continue through your clinical years as well? Can you give us like a brief overview? If like if I were to start Catholica tomorrow, what can I expect my timetable and schedule to be? Well, one thing I was definitely surprised about is that, um, well, in my, in my prior college, uh, well, I, I come from the United States, right? So we did have a fixed schedule. So in the, in the sense that through the whole semester or through the, well, the first semester of the first year, for example, you will have the same classes in a fixed, in a fixed fashion. So for example, every Monday you will take biochemistry at 9 a.m. Every Tuesday you will take anatomy at 10 a.m. Uh, that is not the case with, in, I think in general with Italian medical schools, like uh we do have like we have a, we have a, we have set dates and times for our lessons but they change every week in such a sense that you um i i think it's the same in sapienza right like we have a oh it isn't no we we have very much like i know 100 percent every monday morning let's say back when i was in first year that i would have anatomy one and then tuesday i will have chemistry now that we've like okay now that we're in clinical years we have like applied clinical subjects so let's say i know that monday morning i have ap1 but whether it's going to be cardiology or pulmonology might change from week to week but i always know that it's going to be either cardiology or pulmonology so we do a very subject base oh, okay. sorry about the background yeah oh, so no no it's all right it's all right I, I didn't know that well uh as I was saying, uh, the thing that was different from my other school is that uh, every week there's a there's a change in schedule. We do get the dates and hours in advance, which is good, of course. Um, but every week the timetable is going to be different. Usually we start classes at either 8.30 a.m. or 9.30 a.m. It's very weird to start after that. Um, personally, um, I have a schedule that involves, well, of course, the time that I take during the lessons, which is the, the timetable given to me by the university. But then I dedicate about... Um, two to three hours per for, a, for a separate study session for each of my courses, like a personal study time. Uh, because I just feel that sometimes the time that I spend in the lessons in the classroom isn't enough. It's just like, it's just like an overview, you know, like just brushing. Okay, but like courses. schedule, schedule time wise, you start at 830. And what time do your classes usually end at? Like not extra study, but just class study. Oh, oh, we're talking about only Okay, so usually, yeah, we begin at 830. And we are finished at around four. Okay, that's a pretty long day. Do you have a break in the middle of the day for lunch? We do. We do. Uh, usually, it usually begins at 12. And okay. And then mm -hmm, classes begin again at 1.30. And okay. this continues throughout the years, or is this just for preclinical years? Um, like, do you know if this is a fairly regular thing throughout the entirety of the university? Uh, I've heard from some of my classmates in upper years. Uh, I'm friends with people from the fourth and third year, and I think it's a pretty common occurrence. It's okay. It's like a cool. And how, uh, like, how is your calendar structured? So, like, when do you have exams? How do your exams work? Are they written? Are they oral? Do you get multiple attempts? Like, could you walk me through the uh, academic calendar and how exams fit into it? Definitely. So we have exams. Uh, exams could be a combination of written and, and both written and oral. Only oral or only written depends on the course. Uh, for example, more complex uh, plus we have what we what, what are called integrated courses. So these integrated courses, uh, for example, in the case of basic sciences, we have a combination of chemistry, uh, chemistry, physics, and some levels of mathematics. And all of that is combined into a single exam that is going to be both written and oral. But then we have some other exams that are only oral, like first aid and nursing practice one. And then we have some other exams that are only written, which is, uh, I think it's risk management and safety and health. Uh, usually the dates for the exam are as follows. So we have the whole academic year. And at the beginning, we begin the year on September. 
And um, at the beginning of January, we have we have two separate dates. So we have two sessions for each of the exams, for each for each of the lessons that we took. So let's say we took lessons for basic sciences, theology, and uh, Italian uh, during December. So during after the break during January, we get two dates for each uh, integrated course. So we get two dates for each final exam. So we get two dates for basic sciences, two dates for Italian, and two dates for theology. You are free to choose uh, when to take these exams. Uh, the problem is, is, is that if you don't take them in an orderly way, they will, of course, accumulate and create, create more trouble for you. Um, we take lessons in order, and then we take the lessons for each exam, and then after we do that, we take the final exam. So we have six dates through the year for each exam. So two, um, two per exam. And on the first year, if I remember correctly, I took eight or nine exams. So on January, if I remember correctly, it's the first pair of dates. On, um, I think on March, okay, near the end of March, we have the second pair of dates for each final exam. And by, the, by July, by the whole month of July, you have two dates for each of the final exams in the first year. And then, sorry, uh, it's getting, I'm, I'm dragging on too long, I'm sorry. No, um, no, no, it's fine. I'm just trying to keep a track in my mind. It's, okay, I, yeah, just yeah. Don't, I just don't like to overextend, but at no, September, no. we get an extra opportunity to take ex exams from prior years. So in any case, let's say you missed two of the, you were set to take your last five exams on July, but you missed two of them. I mean, you won't get 40 corso, my understanding, if you take them on September and you just get done with them. And you also get two dates on September. Cool. And like, are you are you able to reject your grades or is it you just take whatever you get? No, you can you can definitely re reject your grades. Of course, if it's higher than 18, because if it's below that, you won't even it won't even be considered. Uh, you can reject your grades or accept it. If you reject it, if, it will be as if you never took it and then you just take it in the next available session. Cool. So that, that is actually like pretty standard with the other universities and you have classes uh, in between exam dates, right? So like during June, you, you don't have exams, you have classes. Uh, we actually, well, this year I never took, you mean lessons in between, like exam and then lessons and then exam? No, I mean like, okay, so you start in September, you do lessons until January, then lessons stop, you start your exam session and then January is over, you start lessons until end of March. Like, I just want to, yeah, okay, cool. Yes, yes. So you take, yeah, like like you said, we have a lessons, like we have a period of lessons, then we take the corresponding exams, then we have another period of lessons, and so on and so forth. Okay, cool. Awesome. And so I, I know you just finished first year, and in Italy, there's not a lot of clinical experience that starts in first year, but have you yeah. had any exposure to any sort of clinical setting or any sort of, like, practical stuff? Um like, what's your experience been like in a clinical setting? Have you had any? Mm, um, if we're talking about Catolica, uh, the closest thing we did with the clinical work was, um, let's see. Well, or, or um, okay, in our first day in a nursing practice class, uh, we get to learn, how, we get to train how to do CPR, but it, well, it wasn't actually a clinical setting. It was just, we were just practicing with the dummy. Yeah, that, that counts. That's still practical. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, talking strictly about the program, the other instance that I remember is, I think one of our microbiology professors was working in the infectious disease department at Gemelli and he had one of the cases. So he took some of us students with him, but only as only to observe, of course. Um, he was kind of lecturing us on what the situation was and explaining what what's going on with the course of treatment with the patient and and that's it but those are the two that i yeah remember. so it's it's very normal in preclinical years it doesn't change but how yeah. how does it change when you get into clinical years like how often do you start going into the hospital do you start going on the wards like daily do you know how the practical experience works once you move into clinical years in like fourth and fifth and sixth year uh I cannot give you consistent details because I only just got in the second year, but I do have um, I do have friends that are um, well that already went through the through those years because they're starting residency, and I know basically uh, that their schedule involves since they're going to other specialties, right? So uh, it basically involves them working in the hospital or uh, spending most of the time on the watch, like you said, 
uh, taking relevant lectures, completing reports. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how much how it works. Like that's all I know is what I've talked with them. That's fine. So like you said that the schedule of 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. basically continues throughout the years. So do you think it's safe to assume that, sorry about the background noise. So when you move on to like fifth and sixth year, that the lectures continue and then you have dedicated days or like, do you have any idea what the split would be or do you just know that the practical experience increases? It's just, I was talking from what I've heard from my from my upperclassmen that it, the schedule is more or less consistent. Okay. But, um, but I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly like in detail how the schedule will look like. Okay, it's I mean, we can ask your friends, right? And then I'll write up an article uh, supplementing how it works. Um, okay. If I mean, if that's OK with you, just so just so we can oh, give yeah. future students a better idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's OK. Um, so the other thing I want to ask about the clinical experience is that some universities, uh, Sapienza doesn't do this, but some universities lock clinical experience behind passing a language certificate for Italian. Do you know if there's any requirement to speak a certain level of Italian before you're allowed into clinical settings? Like, what are the language requirements like? Is there a English certificate requirement when you're enrolling? Is there an Italian certificate requirement after a certain year? Can you tell me all about the languages that are necessary? Yes, uh, I, I am sure that for, well, talking first about the general program of medicine, not going into clinical years, uh, I know that you do need to have some level of certification. I think it's B1 for English, if you want to enroll in the English program in medicine and surgery at Catolica. Uh, I know because even some of my classmates, uh, well, they, they were enrolled in the program, but they didn't have a certificate or some sort of proof that they spoke English. So they were kind of concerned about that. And we actually had a long talk about it. Uh, so definitely you need to have a certain level. I think it's B1 for English if you want to study at Catolica in, in the English program. For uh, the clinical years, in the case of Italian, if I remember correctly, I cannot give you, I cannot give you like 100% um, certain information, but I am sure that the specialization schools, once you go into the webpage, uh, the, there's not like the, the official language for those uh, programs is in Italian. So uh, if you want to, if you want to specialize, if you want to attend specialization school, you need to have attained a certain level of Italian by then. And that's why we take Italian through our first and third years, and I think even beyond that. Oh, cool. So the university provides you with Italian lessons? Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's I awesome. Double, yeah, I think that will double as a certificate by the time you get to uh, your residency program. So are the Italian lessons built into your uh, curriculum? Like, do you have to set tests on it or is it supplemental? No, it is built into your curriculum. It's an actual oh. course that you that yeah. is very cool. That is very, very cool. So I guess it is technically locked behind not a certification, but like probably passing those exams to a certain degree. Um, yeah, I think, sorry for interrupting you. I think those exams will double, like passing those exams will show that you have the proficiency to move on into your um, into residency and clinical years. So, awesome. And yeah. OK, so this is another thing, but I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, especially for Catolica. But does the university do cadaver dissections? Um, you know, uh, for this year, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I think they do. I'm pretty sure they do. I personally, I don't think most of us in first year, became, I think it's mostly because of COVID, were able to see much of it. I mean, most of our labs were closed, unfortunately. Uh, the only lab we got a chance to experiment was biochemistry, and it was only one lesson. But I'm pretty sure they do the dissections. I personally haven't seen any. I mean, I, I would just be curious because in general, Italy doesn't do dissections. It's very rare. And the argument is always that it's because Italy is a Catholic country and like desecrating bodies is, of uh, course, against Catholicism. So I would be very surprised if Catholica did do dissections. But of no. course, like... I, right. I have no idea because also Gemelli, your hospital is a very, very advanced hospital in Italy. So um, like it's it's the Pope's hospital, right? It's like the best yeah. hospital in Rome. Um, OK, so speaking of like, so it's a private university. Um, mm -hmm. How are the fees like how do you know, like what the academic fees are? 
Um, are there any reductions? Can you tell me about the cost? Because like I said, like Jameli is an incredible, incredible hospital, but of course it's funded by the private university and students paying high tuition. Um, so could we talk a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. Of course. So uh, there are different uh, rates for EU students and non-EU students. I know for non-EU students, uh, there's a fixed cost of, I think, 15,000 euros per year. Uh, not counting uh, any scholarships or loans that you may be able to get, of course. But for EU students, there's the possibility to apply for a tax reduction, as you correctly said. Um, it will depend, of course, in your, I think it's related to your ESA level, uh, where the origin of your, of your income comes from, which country it comes from. Uh, and of course, if you're a dependent student, uh, it will depend on the income, on the level of income of your parents. You are supposed to submit a series of requests uh, to the poll office. And then uh, the price, of the, sorry, the tuition cost of each one of your years will be determined uh, by the office. It could range from 7,000, I think, to 15,000 euros per year. That's, that's, that's a pretty fair price for a private university. Yeah, I feel, I feel it's adequate. It's, uh, you have to do this every year, of course. And uh, like I said, it depends on, your, on the level of your income. And then, well, of course, you have to case of, oh, sorry, your No, 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 I, I'm just really shocked because usually the private schools have an average tuition of around 20,000 euro a year with no reductions. So 15,000 to begin with for, again, like such a good hospitals university, I, I think that's a really, really fair price, especially if it can be dropped yeah. to... 7,000 because like other public universities go up to 4,000 and there isn't that huge of a difference for when you consider the benefits of a private education. That's really incredible. I'm really, really surprised to yeah. find out about that. Um, so other than the income-based reductions, are there any merit-based scholarships or grants? Mm, 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 mm. Let me think for a moment. Um... Yeah, I know there's the La Ciudisco scholarship, but that's not really affiliated to Catholica. It's more like a general award for anyone that wants to. Uh, yeah, it's a regional, like everyone yeah, regional. Who, who goes to Rome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I haven't personally uh, heard about the scholarships offered by Catholica. I'm sure there are. But um, apart from the um, rate reductions that we just talked about, I am not familiar with the scholarships. Okay. Like Does, through all school, but I'm sure there are. Yeah, I mean, even the income-based one is actually quite massive. So are there accommodation options? Like, does the university offer private dorms or do most students rent somewhere in Rome? Uh, how, like, walk me through all of the accommodation options and the costs, like as a rough guide. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, uh, in Rome especially, well, uh, since we're talking about the medical school, there's a lot of dorms there. Um, since it's a Catholic school, it's divided by uh, guys only and, and girls only dorms. Um, there's, um, uh, students have a mixture of either they live off campus or very close to the, to the actual school. And there's other dorms like mine, which is like 30 minutes away, um, but it's pretty accessible. So um, I know that Nuova Georgenum, uh, school is for guys and it's located on campus. Uh, I think there's one another uh, dorm for guys and um, the cost of a single room in there is $6,000, sorry, 6,000 euros per, uh, per year. Uh, that's for doubles and for singles it will be 8,000. But if you get one of the, um, the Forresteria, like the San Giuseppe Marello uh, College, which is the dorm I'm actually in, uh, the cost for a single room is she is a bit cheaper, so it will be 5,500, but that's the only option that you can select because there's no double rooms. Um, lastly, I know um, there's also girls only dorms on campus. There's two of them. I just don't remember the prices, but actually a good deal. Um, there's contests, right? And I guess it's access of sort of a scholarship. Um, you compete in a graduatoria similar to the entrance exam uh, based on your grades and other merits you can be selected for uh, and nominated for a free room for the rest of the academic year. I know oh, that's really time. awesome. Yeah, it is. It is pretty cool. And the convenient part is that it's a, these, are, these are always dormant inside of campus. So you're always be close to your classes and you will, you will, you will, you will be exempt from paying the cost of the room. Yeah. So I just took a look on the map exactly where Catolica is because I didn't know. And it's not that it's like so the city center is around where I'm showing now. You can't see it, but people on screen are able to see it. 
And yeah. so Katolika is a little bit outside the city to the west. So do you think private, uh, like not student accommodation, but do you think private accommodation might be cheaper then because you're not paying the city center rates? I mean, 6,000 for a year is not terrible, but considering it's shared, it's not great either. Do you have any idea how that compares to private housing? Like if a student just wanted to rent an apartment nearby? Um, right. Uh I can say I can say from my experience, I found uh, apartments that range anywhere from two thousand, sorry, not two thousand, okay, two hundred and thirty euros to thirty three hundred euros a month for um, for similar services. The bad thing is that, of course, uh, the cheaper it is, the least services you have, at least in the dorms you have. Of course, you have free Wi-Fi the whole day. You have even 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 in the foresteria, you have um, you know private services like. You, you get free toilet paper every every week. Somebody's oh, that is pretty paper. good. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it's pretty convenient. I bought a, I bought a bunch of rolls of toilet paper, and now I have no, I don't have to use them because somebody's already bringing toilet paper to my room. Anyway, um, um, but some of these other apartments may not have Wi-Fi, or you might have to share them with not not of course in the room. You might be around um, a lot of people who might not exactly be students. And the advantage of these private accommodations is that you're always surrounded by like-minded people who will be doing the same thing as you. Yeah. So you're not really in that environment. But yeah, the cost is a bit of a is a bit of a downside. So. Okay. I mean, it's always a it's always a trade-off, you know. Um, but yeah. that's pretty awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. So Thank so. You. You basically talked about some of the, the, the facilities you got. Do you, do you have uh, like study areas and stuff in the accommodation? And I want to kind of segue from this question into the study facilities in Catolica itself. So like from the private accommodation compared to the university's uh, study facilities. Okay, so I know in the, at least in the Forasteria that I live in, there's like two or three dedicated study rooms in the first in the first area. They're they're usually pretty calm. And there's Wi-Fi access. That's pretty good too. Um, apart from that, um, the rooms are a good place to study as well. In the university itself, I know in the Instituto Biologici, uh, which is where most of our classes are held. Um, in the first and second floors, there are um, there are also dedicated study rooms. So they're less they're less popular. I guess it's because of the location. In the Polo, which is like the central office of the Rome campus, in the second and third floors, there's a library and you can reserve a spot um, for as much time as you want. Most people just reserve the spot several times over so they can just keep the, the seat on the table. And on the second floor as well, where the library is, there's also several desks. Um, if you want to just take your time and study there, but it's more open. So. And are the are the libraries nice? Like, do you have lights and sockets for like plugs? Uh, how would like would you describe the quality of the facilities good or do you think they're just like meh? Oh, no, no, no. I, of I the like university. I yeah, no, no, no. I think they're excellent. They're they're pretty good. The Polo especially is a, is a beautiful place if you want to study. It's it's a yeah, it's pretty awesome. I can send you a picture later if you want to see it, but it's um it's a good place to study it's usually pretty calm um everybody's been in their own business there's there's a lot of space there's even there's even lockers that um if you get um if you get your student id you can even um if you have a lot of stuff on your back you can just put it there and come pick it back later so you don't have to carry it around are there any other cool teaching facilities like what are your labs like or do you have hangout areas like what are the general student facilities like of the university are we talking about, um, or you mean, do you want to talk about the labs uh, or like recreational facilities? Well, well, let, let's start with labs and other teaching facilities and then move on to recreational facilities such as canteen and sports. But like in general, like if you're a student there, what kind of services can you expect? Well, uh, you, do have the, you do have the cafeteria and the mensa, uh, which, is, uh, which is for taking lunch. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, well, the labs are pretty well taken care of. I know the, the clinical biochemistry lab in the third floor is actually pretty, um, pretty well taken care of. And uh, some images that I do have will describe it better. But um, what I say? Oh, boy. Oh, I'm getting like, OK, sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's OK. Um, we do have we do have the anatomy lab, although at the time we did visit it, we didn't do many dissections. It was just 
because uh, we, we were studying bone anatomy at the time for our exam. So all we did was uh, basically we were exposed to these different kind of bones and the professor will lay us the whole like, for example, uh, the skull, the femur, um, the, you know, the ribs. Yeah, and, uh, one look at the bones, yeah. Yeah, like a, like a superficial explanation. Um, apart from those, I haven't had the opportunity to check other laboratories, but I mean, you're happy with them in general. You think they're high quality, yeah, basically. I think what, yeah, what I've seen so far, I I like I like the design, how well they're taken care of. There's usually um, they make good use of the space they have. Uh, if we want to talk about the facilities, apart from the libraries that we already mentioned and the study spaces, I like tennis. <laughs> so there's um, there's two pretty tennis courts, um, clay uh, clay uh, clay floor uh, right near. Uh, right behind this blue biology. Um, I already talked about the libraries. Cool. So you, you, the, the tennis courts are open to students. Like, do you have to pay or are they just there? Are there other sports facilities? Uh, apart from tennis, uh, there's a soccer court. They're all open. So you don't really have to, I guess, apart from showing your ID, you don't have to do anything else. If there's usually someone, someone at the door. Um, what else? I think, I think that's it. Are there, are, is there a gym? Are there sports clubs like? So personally, I don't know if at the Rome campus, there's a gym. I know in the, maybe within the doors, there's, there are small gyms for each, mm. um, for each students that are accommodated there. I know in the Foresteria, we have a gym in the third floor, for example, but it's pretty small. It's not like, it's not uber complex. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're just like the gym in Sapienza considering it should accommodate a campus of 140,000 students only has one treadmill. So like, oh. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not expecting anything uh, amazing. I'm just curious if there is one, like if there yeah. is an active student, can they join a basketball team, for example? But I mean, if you don't know, it's it's fine. Like, Oh, but I do know there's a lot of teams. And ah, okay. Of it's just like, yeah, it's just like they're spread over all the five different campuses. So uh, at Rome, I guess we have tennis and soccer. And at Milan, I guess we have uh, basketball i haven't gone too much about it but i know they're spread and we do have we do have sports teams okay so there are options and so the final the final question that i kind of want to ask is your class dynamic and quality of professors so you're pretty you're, you're a pretty international group heavier on the non-european union side you said there's 50 spaces for non-Europeans. So what are what is the class dynamic like? Do you have like a very high variation in age, in gender, in I don't know, background, in country? Like how would you describe your general class dynamic? Yes. Um, I will say the level of diversity is pretty high. With regards to the age range, uh, most of us go from anywhere from 19 to 26 years old, because some people are coming back to get uh, their second degree. Uh, I am, for example, I already have a degree, but I'm coming back for this one. Um, with regards to, our, to nationality wise, we, we have people, we have people from China, Japan, from here, from Italy, Spain, um, Venezuelan, uh, Bolivia, Korea, let's see, India. That is very international. Turkey. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we have a, the, the bad thing is that because uh, this year there's been a lot of frogs problems with students who were not able to get their visas. Actually, uh, there's 80 of us, but only about physically here in Rome, there's only like 35 of us. So most people, because they have the option to take the courses from overseas, they just stay there. Yeah, it makes sense. And do you do you think do you generally get the sense of collaboration? Like, does everyone share their resources together? Like, do you guys come together to share everything? Or do you think it's more like in America where there's like a gunner mentality and competitiveness? Like, how would you describe the oh, overall uh, like friendliness, I guess, of the environment? Uh, I will say it, it takes aspects of both, you know, you still feel that sense of competition because everybody wants to do well and impress their professors and make a name for themselves. But then definitely, I mean, we have a, we have a share folder where we share everything we have. I'm sure you're familiar with Bob's, right? Let's move in. Yeah. The, the <laughs> saviors of Italian courses. Yeah. 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 That's that actually, I didn't know. I've never seen anything like that before. Like usually it's like sharing notes, essentially we, we go to classes, we make teams, uh, we partner up with someone, and then we basically take notes and record everything the professor says in the class. 
And then for those of us who weren't able to make it that day, I mean, just take just take this box. It, I mean, it's everything there, you know. Just yeah, yeah. It's it's so, it's quite uh, it's course. it's quite hard to explain to people who don't study in Italy, but like SPOBs are basically transcripts of the classes, but it's a very, very big operation where people add like different pictures, they add different graphics, tables, like supplementing to create this like incredible resource. And SPOBs are so like so we don't know this for the English course, but if you go to a stationery store, you can actually buy SPOBs from different classes in Italian. So like this yeah. is how uh, SPOBina, like the transcripts, this is how big it is in Italian university culture. Like every university has this like integrated uh, transcript yeah. experience. But yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, so you do share a lot. Sorry. I'm sorry, just, just the last thing. Uh, apart from that, uh, we, we took our time because each course requires textbooks. So if someone finds if someone finds uh, it's pretty easy to the editions we use it's pretty easy to find free versions of pdfs online so we'll just create a folder and share them out with our classmates because some people are coming in late from the wait list so that's very convenient yeah that's that's super nice of you guys and how is the relationship with your professors like did the professors give you a lot of resources are they helpful are they available for office hours do they take a personal interest how how is your like relationship with your professors in general and the quality of professors well, uh, the professors, to me, from my point of view, the, le the level of English is excellent. The way the classes are paced is also good. Like they make clear, they make themselves clear and then they're easy to be understood. It takes a while to get used, I suppose, to, to the tone because when they speak English, obviously they still have that bit of it and of an Italian accent. Like, it can be a bit difficult to understand, but you get used to it pretty quickly. Uh, with regards to the materials, apart from research articles, we will need to, let's say, stage a presentation or uh, get reports ready. I mean, we will get those from them, but with regards to textbooks and other study materials, we will have to find those on our own because uh, I guess professors believe that each person is different and not everybody's going to follow the same method. So, for example, for the textbooks, that's something that we will, you know, scout ourselves and then share among ourselves. Uh, but everything else, uh, with regards to research articles, uh, questions to practice, software, that is provided to us by them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I basically think that's all of the questions that I had. Um, just before we finish up, is there anything that, like, I don't know, you would like to add or that you wish you could have told yourself before you arrived or not like a warning, but kind of a message that you would like to give to anyone who's considering Catholica? Um, I guess, oh, I'm at a loss for words here. <laughs> I actually have something to say at this point. Um, yes, I guess be ready to uh, explore different study methods. I mean, I've never, uh, this is my first time in medical school, of course. So approach each subject differently. Don't be afraid to ask questions or team up with people. Start socializing early with your classmates because it's not, so that, that way down the road, it makes it easier for you to team up with them. Um, you know, take advantages of the university resources. If you find any text recommended by a professor, take it. Uh, you can even go to them and, and assess and explain to them, hey, this is what I'm doing to study for this exam. Do you think this will work? Uh, I did this way. Don't, don't be afraid to address your weaknesses early on because it's going to help you in the long way. And uh, I guess that's all I have. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's that's uh, that's really awesome. I think that's a very fair method because a lot of people, especially international students, come and they have no idea how to study for oral exams. So I think that's actually a really, really uh, fair message. And yeah, Jose, I want to thank you so, so much for giving us such good information and hopefully it will help tons and tons of students. And yeah, I'm going to end the interview here. Thank you so much for joining okay. me today.